Hey guys, welcome back, Morphologist here, and tonight on Space Engineers, I'm going to be teaching you how to make your own smart airlock only using four timer blocks. That's no programming involved whatsoever. Of course, there are options to use programming blocks, however, that is not going to be covered in this particular video. No, I'm going to show you how to do it all in vanilla. That's mod free for those of you who don't know that term. But now you might be asking, but why would I need a smart airlock? And that's pretty simple. If you're playing survival and you're creating oxygen from ice, it's a resource that's finite. That means that you can waste it by accidentally ejecting your entire station or ship into space. So what's the difference between a smart airlock and a dumb airlock? Well, a dumb airlock is basically just two doors, and that works just fine, except when you forget to close one door and you open another and happen to eject all of your oxygen into space. So let's take a brief look at how this thing actually works in person. When I come up to the station, you'll notice that there's a button panel to the right. This is actually to activate the airlock if this door is closed and the interior door is open. Right now, it's actually in its exterior facing mode. So if I press this button, all that's gonna happen is that the alarm is going to turn on and that's it. So it's not gonna depressurize. It's not gonna do anything silly. It's just going to stay in its current state. However, if I come in here and I press this button, which is the button to allow me to get into the station, it's going to activate the sequence, close the store first, turn this light on, and then after a few seconds, once this place has been oxygenated, as you'll notice in the lower right hand corner, this door will open and the interior warning lights will turn off. That lets me know that this is an okay airlock, say if I accidentally close this, and that I can access it without having to worry about depressurizing the compartment. However, this door is red, and if I try to activate it, it doesn't work because this door is actually currently turned off and that's part of the timer blocks. The timer blocks are actually located over here and they don't really necessarily have to be located this close as long as they're attached to your station or ship anywhere about, they will work just fine. So you need two sets. One set is for the inbound pressurization sequence and the other is for the outbound depressurization sequence. I've also created this diagram so that you can better understand how one of those sequences work. In this case, it's the pressurization sequence. So if you want to pause it now just to take a brief look, you can. Otherwise, I'll walk you through it. The button is hooked up to pressure timer block one. That's going to turn on your sound, your warning light, your airlock light outside. Then it's going to turn on your interior door. Now this is important for later because it's been locked and turned off. That way you can't accidentally decompress the compartment like we talked about earlier. Then you're going to close the exterior door. That's going to prevent the oxygen from escaping once we turn on the air vent, which is the next step. So the air vent is then turned on and it pressurizes the compartment. Finally, the second timer block is activated. This is the one that's going to turn off the sound block, turn off the warning light, turn off the light on the inside, and then open the interior door. Then finally, it's going to turn off the exterior door, which basically disables it from being opened accidentally. If you didn't understand this, it's okay, because the next step of this video is to actually walk you through building it for yourself. So I'm going to assume that you already have a station or ship that you want to put this on. Right now it doesn't have an airlock, so whenever I open the door, you guessed it, it decompresses, throws all the oxygen outside. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to prep the space. So let's start by clearing your toolbar of all existing items and then replacing them with the following. A sound block, an interior light, an interior door, an air vent, a timer block, an oxygen tank, a large conveyor block, a regular block, and finally, the button panel. Now that you've got all of these items on your toolbar, we are ready to start building your airlock. First, let's prep the area by erasing anything that's in the way. So for me, I've got this overhang. Let me make this a flat surface. After that, I'm going to create a three by three by one block height room. This is the size of the room you're gonna have to construct if you're gonna follow my tutorial. I fast forwarded it just to make it a little bit quicker. And the final touch, of course, is to add the door which makes up the regular airlock. Now, this is the dumb airlock that I talked about earlier. You could keep it this way, but since this is a smart airlock tutorial, now we have to add all the components that will make this thing actually work, like I showed earlier in the video. But let's stay organized before we go any further by naming the doors that we've created. So for the interior door, I'm going to name that inner door. And then for the exterior door, well, of course, that's going to be named outer door. Next, let's find a place to put the timer blocks that we're going to have to use for the depressurization and pressurization sequences. For me, I'm just placing them in the exterior because that's easier for me. You might want to place them somewhere on the interior of the ship, say in the control room, so they're well protected. 
After that, I'm immediately going to name each of the timer blocks so I do not forget which one's which. The first timer block is obviously going to be pressurized. The second one, pressurize two. The third one, depressurize. Fourth one, depressurize two. Good, these timer blocks are ready for now. We're not gonna add any functions to them just yet because we have to add all the components. So let's start by adding the lights with the two exterior lights that are gonna work as the red lights that let you know if this airlock is accessible or not. So find the two lights that you just added, change them to the color red, and then put them in their own group called exterior red lights. This is important for later because we're gonna to have to use this for the sequence. After you've done the first one, let's repeat the same process for the interior door, except we're gonna name these two lights after we color them to interior red lights. Excellent, it's starting to look a little bit more like the airlock that I showed in the earlier example, but we still have a few more steps to go before we can call this complete. So let's take out the small interior light again and place another one in the middle of the room. This is going to be our warning light. To set this up, go inside your control panel, find the light that you've just placed, set it to warning light for the groups, this is again later for when we have to program this, and then, after you've done that, change the light to red. After you've set the color, we want to set up the blink interval. That's going to make it strobe during the sequences where it's pressurizing or depressurizing. And great, as you can see, it worked perfectly, this light is strobing, and now we're going to move on to the next step. Now we have to place our oxygen tank and vent. It's important to say that you cannot attach this to your network, because if you do, it will not function properly as your tanks that you have on your station will continually fill up until they're full, and this thing will not work to depressurize or pressurize your compartment. After you've hooked up the conveyor blocks to your new tank, make sure you place your vent facing inward with no gaps to the exterior so that you can only use it inside of this airlock. After you've placed it, go straight into the control panel and turn the air vent to the depressurization setting. However, it is very important to note that the oxygen tanks will default with nothing inside of them, so you will have to open the interior door to allow some oxygen to flow inside of the tank. Once it's been filled up, say just a little bit, that's probably all you need for this airlock. Next, we're going to want to place the sound block for the airlock. This is going to sound the alert sound when we start to activate the timer block. So after you've placed it, go into your settings, find the sound block that you've just placed, and select the alert sound that you would like to play when you activate the sequence. For me, I sort of prefer alert too, but you can use a custom sound or any sound that you like, it really doesn't matter. Then you want to set the loop time for around 5 seconds. You could probably set it a lot longer than that because the sequence is actually going to turn the block off, so in this part you can set it for as long as you like. Great, almost all the components are ready, except now we need to start setting stuff up to be ready for the timer block setting. I'm going to start with exterior mode, that means the exterior door is open, the exterior red lights are turned off, and the warning lights are also turned off. Great, stuff is pretty much prepped for the timer blocks. Now all we need are some buttons to activate those timer blocks once they've been finished programming, so I'm going to do that right now. For the interior you only need one. For the exterior you need one, and then finally, for the interior you will also need one. Finally, for the pressurization sequence we want to make sure the interior door is set to off for the toggle block. That is important for when we set up the sequence and you will soon see why. Afterward, we're going to set up all of the buttons so that they work correctly after we've got the timer block set up. So for the exterior one, you're going to want to set the button to start depressurization. On the inner block, for the leftmost one, you're going to want to set that for depressurization. And then on the right side, you're going to set that one to pressurize. Finally, on the innermost door, that one has to be set for pressurize. Finally, we are ready to set up those timer blocks to make this smart airlock work. So follow along. Go back into your control panel and find your first pressurize block. Afterward, you're going to want to set the delay to around one second. Once you've set that, let's go into setup actions. After that, find the sound block and drag it to the first option and set to play. Following that, find your interior lights that you set up in your groups. The first one you want to do is the warning light. That's the blinking one, and you're going to want to set that to toggle on. Not toggle on and off, but toggle on. Next, find the group that we named as exterior red lights and toggle those to on. Then find your outer door and set that one to close. After that, find your airlock vent that's inside of your airlock and set that one to depressurize off. 
Remember right now it's set to depressurize, so if we set to depressurize off, that means it's going to fill the room back up again like we want it for if you were going inside of your station. The final block you're going to want to place on here is your pressurize 2. That's important because it's going to set up the second part of the sequence. Great, the first timer block is ready for the pressurize part of this sequence. So now we're going to want to set up the second part of the sequence, which is the pressurize 2 block. Set the delay to around 8 seconds. It can be longer if your space is bigger because it has to fill up, but for me this is more than enough. Then find your sound block, drag and drop it, and set to stop. Then we're going to want to find our warning lights, drag those down, and set those ones to off. Then find your interior red lights, drag and drop those down into the action bar, and set those ones to turn off. Next, find your inner door, drag and drop it, and set it to open. The final door you want to drag and drop down is your outer door, and you want to set that one to toggle off. This feature will allow you to make sure that that external door isn't accidentally opened by somebody who doesn't realize that the other side is currently not pressurized. This is very important because you will not lose any oxygen if you use this feature. So the pressurization sequence is set up, but the depressurization sequence still has to be set up through the timer blocks. But because it's exactly the same as the first one, only the options are switched, that means like interior lights or switched with exterior lights, so on and so forth, I will not go over it in the video since it will take uh, quite a long time to say exactly the same thing. So if you watch the video, you'll probably be able to figure it out. If not, don't forget, I will allow you to download this map inside of the workshop and that is going to be in the info section of the video so make sure you check it out and download it for yourself it's also a pretty cool station just to have it's a refueling station for those of you who want to refuel say in survival mode with oxygen you can place it on a large exploration map or you can have it in your own survival server and for the first time ever i'm including a ship that was created by one of my friends named felnor he created this ship called the pack rat it basically goes into large asteroids and burrows to create basically spaces for you to build your own asteroid base. I suggest you guys check that thing out too, it's pretty darn cool. Also, if you're wondering about the station video I showed earlier this week, don't worry I'm still working on it. In fact, tomorrow I'm planning on working on another video to showcase some stuff on it, so stay tuned for that. If you found this video helpful, if you'd like to see more, or if you just like me, make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button, and tell your friends. And I'll see you guys next time.